Hello friends, good day. Welcome to our YouTube channel GKR Soft. In this video, we are going to discuss about Diagnostics Event Manager. It's also called as DEM. DEM is part of service layer of Autosar architecture. What is DEM? DEM is a service component. It will be placed inside the base software. Inside the base software, it will be part of the service layer and it is responsible for processing and storing diagnostic events and associated data. Diagnostic event means error or fault. Whenever there is a problem inside the Autosar architecture or inside our software, then that will be reported as a fault to DEM. DEM will handle the complete fault. DEM module is responsible for diagnostic event processing and storing of event related data to memory and read event related data from memory and provide information to DCM module. UDS service number 19 is completely related to DEM module and DEM offers interfaces to the application layer and to other BSW module. When you want to report a uh, error or fault to the DEM, then the application software component has to use the API via RTE. At the same time, base software also can report an error to DEM or fault to an DEM. And DEM will be connected with DCM, NVM and ECU state manager SWIM DLT. This will be connected with DCM to read the fault from the DEM. For an example, by using 19 service, DCM can read the reported fault and DEM will be associated with NVM to store the reported event and it will be connected with ECU state manager to initialize in the early driving cycle. So, ECU state manager is responsible to initialize the DEM. So, how we can report a DEM event? We can do the report from two ways. One is base software, another one is software component. So, as you see in this picture, the application software component wants to report an event to DEM, then it has to use the API called report, sorry, DEM set event status. The application software component want to use, then they have to use DEM underscore set event status. But if the BSW want to report an fault to an DEM, then they have to use DEM underscore report error status. It, in During the call, we have to pass two arguments. One is event ID, another one is event status. Event ID is unique per event. So, what is event ID? What is event status? We can take one example. Consider a software component which monitors the health of a battery and one diagnostic event is associated with battery health. Monitor function will report the status of event to DEM. So, event ID is assigned to an event. Then event ID is unique per event. This is called as a event ID. And based on the event ID, that means in the BSW module or software component report event status to DEM using event ID. We can take an example for event ID is 40 is associated with battery health event. So, event ID will be assigned by the DEM module. In that case, so what we will pass as an event status? Here you can pass as a, these all are the options. One is you can pass as pass or failed, pre-pass, free file and threshold reached. But this will be based on the debouncing mechanism. That debouncing mechanism we can discuss more deeper in this video. Now, so whenever you are going to design a software component and which is going to report to the DEM, so how will you design? So according to the Autosar world, DEM will be act as a server and software component will act as a client. So whenever you want to make a communication between DEM to software component or software component to DEM, then we have to use the client server interface. For an example here, the software component has a R port. So here I have a diagnostic monitor interface. But based on the application, you can have a diagnostic info or other as well. And DEM side, we will have a P port. And here also we have a client server interface and we have used the diagnostic monitor. So the one thing you have to keep in your mind is DEM will act as a server and software component will act as a client. DEM debouncing method. It's one of the important concepts to understand more in the DEM concept. So debouncing is a specific mechanism to evaluate if the diagnostic event it gets qualified or not. For an example, whenever you are reporting an event, whether the particular event or fault is qualified or not, the qualification will be checked based on some conditions. That's what exactly come from a debouncing method. It's also called as a debouncing algorithm. This works on top of the potential signal debouncing and can be done within the software component or inside the DEM. For an example, we have a three different options for debouncing. One is counter-based debounce and time-based debounce and monitor internal. Counter-based debounce and time-based debounce implemented by DEM. But monitor internal completely implemented by the software component. And if you want to choose 
which debounce mechanism you want to use then the configuration parameter then debounce algorithm class here you have to enable which one you are going to use but based on your application you have to select whether you want a counter based or time based or monitor internal now first we can start to discuss about what is counter based debouncing the counter based debouncing basically first we should know about it it's all possible parameters are sign integer 16 and possible parameters are like failure threshold past threshold step size up step size down jump down value jump down used jump up value jump up used in the counter based debouncing what the developer or autosar developer has to consider is whenever you want to report an event to the dem then you are saying until it reaches the threshold value then only it can be qualified for an example you are saying it starts from minus one so you are increase increase incrementing step by step then when it is reached three and every step you are incrementing to one so you can see this picture this is the way the counter based debouncing will work for an example if you are going to report so in that case from your application software component is yes enabled with counter based debouncing so whenever they want to report an event they will come up with a pre-filed so they will pass as an argument of event status as pre-filed so whenever the pre-filed is reported then your count will get incremented based on your configuration if you have mentioned in the configuration the increment step size will become like one then it will be reached from for an example it starts from minus one then it will reach from zero so like that it will, it will get incremented but it's an example i am saying so this is called as a counter based debouncing so whenever it is reaches the threshold value for an example you are keeping a threshold value as three then in that case once it is reaches three then it will be considered as a confirmed dtc at the same time if you want to make it to clear then if you are passing a pre-pass then it will happen as a one more decrement step size will happen for an example if you are in a two then suddenly you have passed the argument with pre-passed as a event status byte then it will be jump down then it will become two to one so jump down is performed if all the following conditions are fulfilled for an example new report is pre-passed as i said it should be reported with pre-passed and last report is pre-failed meaning for an example last report is pre-failed and it reaches two then whenever you pass pre-pass then you have a decrement step size is one then it will become a one and the counter value greater than jump down value then only jump down will be is performed and jump up there is some following conditions new report is pre-failed then last report is pre-passed then counter less than jump up value if jumping up necessary the counter is increased or decreased in the same process step according to pre pre-pass, pre-passed or pre-filed so in that case pre-passed or pre-filed will be used in the counter based debouncing you can see this this is a way step up and step down will happen so as i have shown here so pre-passed and pre-filed will be used in the debounce dem internally the counter base will be processed by dem so this will be implemented by dem completely meaning the application software component during development we have to do all the configuration for the base of base software but it will be completely handled by the dem counter base in additional we can say the counter based debouncing parameter to determine when a monitored event has passed or failed for each event id the software maintains a counter so it will count but the counting value will be defined by the developer so whenever the pre-filed events arrive as i mentioned or as i said the increment step size default is one at the same time for pre processed then decrement step size is one to determine the event id like for an example failed threshold default to two and passed the threshold you can keep a default as minus one but still you can configure so if you want to say i want you want to jump to then you can make a configuration according to that that's what counter based debouncing time based debouncing so here all counter parameter or sign integer 16 and possible parameter or debounce time failed threshold debounce time passed threshold failed threshold means time in seconds so this debounce counter or the debounce timer will be configured in seconds to qualify event as failed same way time in second to qualify as a event as passed so here possible event status is you can make a pre-passed pre-filed or failed or passed here if you will see in the time based debouncing like timer is started after pre-filed or pre-passed is reported so this will be reported from your application software component you can take exam so you are passing a pre-filed or pre-passed then timer will get started the timer continues if a pre-filed is reported while failed timer is already running so then timer will continue unlock us or 
for pre-paused and timer is reset if pre-failed is reported while passed timer is already running. So, in that case, the timer will get reset. This is what exactly about the time-based debouncing. So, the difference between counter-based and time-based is the time-based here you will use the timer in seconds but there you will use a counter. So, whenever the report happens, the timer then your counter will get incremented. That's what in the counter-based debouncing. Now, third one is monitor internal debounce. So, monitor internal debounce will be completely implemented by a software component. So, here in event status, you can pass, you can pass like argument as passed or failed. It's not allowed to report pre-passed or pre-failed in the monitor internal debounce case because this will be completely taken care by the application software component. Nothing will be done by the dem. So, whenever you want to report, for an example, there is a failure, then you have to make a RT API call to call as a set event status. Inside this call, then dem set event status will get called. So, here you have to pass as a event status. It's a one example. So, in that case, event ID will be configured as a port defined argument. But it depends on your stack. So, how your requirement is saying, uh, based on all these things, you have to decide. So, this is the way monitor internal debounce will be designed. Event aging. So, now you can consider in a case, you have reported the event. So, now how the e aging will start to work. For You can consider in a way, when an event is stored into NVM and event is no longer getting failed, then event starts aging and once event is aged, event is removed from memory. So, how exactly this will be done? That means, certain period of time, meaning some operation cycles, it will be considered. So, consider a event is failed and stored into memory. In an operation cycle, event does not fail and event status passed only. Then, trigger to aging is started. An aging cycle counter is started and incremented in each operation cycle if event is passed only in operation cycle and does not fail. When aging cycle counter reached threshold value defined by the user or developer, then event is removed from memory. This is called as a aging and it is also called as unlearning. Aging means deleting of a no longer failed event. Aging counter or aging cycle counter or DTC aging counter, it specifies the counter which is used to perform aging. So, this is one of the important concept in DEM. Operation cycle. So, operation cycle is base of the event qualifying and also DEM scheduling. For an example, we can take ignition cycle, power cycle, driving cycle, engine warm-up cycle. The operation cycles are defined in DEM. Each event is mapped to an operating cycle and DEM supports more than one operating cycle. Here I have mentioned some and when operation like the operating cycle is not started, the event reports are ignored. So, no fault entry in memory and no system degradation. And if you want to understand more about operation cycle, then you can watch my complete DEM playlist. DTC status byte. It is one of the important part whenever you want to report an event. So, DTC status byte is more important. Meaning, DTC, so how it will be reported? According to ISO 14229-1, DTC status, by, status byte is defined. So, bit 0 to bit 7 represents DTC status. Meaning, test failed means monitor has evaluated error condition and debouncing is performed. Generally, it is called as a maturation criteria is met. So, in bit 0 means it is test failed. Bit 1 means test failed this operation cycle. Bit 2, pending DTC. Bit 3, confirmed DTC. And from bit 4 to bit 7, that is for a like test is not completed since last clear. But bit 3 and bit 2 is more important when you want to understand whether your particular event status. So, that will be notified by using DTC status. So, in some cases like according to ISO 14229, for each diagnostic event, DEM module maintains a UDS DTC status byte information. DTC number is of 4 bytes, meaning some cases it can be 3 bytes, but there are globally common DTC number and supplier specific DTC number. But uh, basically DTC number, it depends on your OEM. So, whenever you want to understand, then you have to check with your OEM. So, diagnostic trouble code is always associated with an event. When event is reported as passed or failed, status of DTC changes. So, DCM uses DTC number to read information about diagnostic event and DTC via 19 service. For an example, 1902 or 1904. So, 
according to UDS, it will be this will be decided. This is status byte will be decided according to the ISO standard 14229. If you want to understand more about the DTC status byte, you can watch my DEM complete playlist. Thanks for watching this video. If you like it, please share it with your friends. If you want to stay with us for more technical content, if you want to, then you can subscribe our channel. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.